there is one crucial factor that will determine if a guy who is serious about a relationship will pursue you for marriage. And that is the dating category he subconsciously places you in. So today I'm revealing the five honest boxes or categories men who are ready to find the one place women into and why only one of them inspires commitment. I'm going to shoot it to you straight because the guys will not share this with you. They're not going to tell you which box they place you in. They're simply going to act in one of three ways. Number one, it's going to be dismissive. They don't care. Number two, hot and cold. Number three, highly pursuant. Now, this video isn't about guys who are not ready for a relationship, who are highly avoidant, and who are seeking just to have a good time with women for a weekend. This is about men who are ready for a relationship, and depending upon how you show up for yourself, how you act in the best of ways will want to connect with you or not really be interested in pursuing something deeper. I have three ambitious goals for this video. Number one, that you can recognize more clearly based on the way the guy is showing up where you are in his criteria, in his box checking. Number two, that you understand you're not locked into this. If you're in one of these boxes, there's a way out. And it's not necessarily about the guy wanting you more. It's about you being the best, most awesome version of you. Third thing is I want to show you, if you stay until the end, what are the four specific steps you can take if you want to get out of these boxes and step into a version of you that actually leads to commitment. Because out of these five boxes, only one of them inspires wanting the sire and a guy taking it all the way into popping up the question and giving you a ring. The first category that men place women into when they're pursuing marriage is what's her name again category. And this category is where a guy doesn't really know who you are. I say tongue in cheek, but sometimes they don't really even know your name. So what would cost this? What would cost a guy to connect with you and not feel anything? Well, obviously, maybe you're not his type. There's little you can do about it. But most times when that is the case, what he's experiencing is a lack of uniqueness from you, a lack of courage in expressing who you are, a lack of radiance, a lack of clarity in terms of being you. And here's why it happens. Sometimes it happens because in your search for finding that elusive guy, you've dealt with a few blows along the way. And that means that you're trying to play it super safe. So you're not asking the tough questions. You're not showing with the utmost awesomeness that you have to offer. You're trying to vanilla yourself to make sure that you don't rock the boat. But in doing so, he's not sensing enough spark, enough aliveness, and not because you don't have it, because you're not showing it. Second category that men who are seeking commitment place women into is the friendly sister. There's nothing more, I want to pull my hair out type of feeling for many women, that this friend zone, sisterly connection with a guy. Why would guys place you in this category? Sometimes there's a lack of range. There's one specific energy which might be fun and friendly and nurturing coming from you, but without the range of the other part of you that's more connected to the truth who you are, who might have a range of, there's more sensuality in you. There's more of a polarity that takes place between you and him. So when things are very monotone in your expression, this tends to happen. When there's a lack of options from you, this tends to happen. Why does it happen when you have lack of options? Well, because you find a guy, you kind of put him on a pedestal, then you start being friendly, thinking that that will cause him to like you more. He finds you likable and he likes you as a friend, but he senses almost like there's too much availability on your side, not because you're trying to be over available because you have no other options. When you have no other options, you're going to say yes to this guy whenever he wants to do things because there's nothing else going on for you. There's no other men who are pursuing you, which means you're going to put a little more energy in this guy. He's going to take a little bit for granted. And the lack of range combined with all those things means that he's going to put you in this friend zone that is really hard to get out of unless you do some of the things I'm going to be sharing with you <laughs> at the end of this video. The third category that guys who are serious about commitment place women into is the desperate one. What is the desperate one? Someone who is not seeing many options and is showing overly anxious, overly eager with a scarcity mindset, with a lack of standards, meaning the guy is going to ask things of you and test you. And because there's a feeling of desperation, you might lower your standards and do them. Or you may not even have those standards for yourself. Similar to the second one, but the feeling that guys get with women who are more desperate in their approach is that there's not enough value in there to commit to that person for life. Why would a guy commit to someone who basically is looking to him 
to fill the void of her existence. When you have a mindset that in some ways, I'm not saying clearly black and white, but in some ways thinks about the guy's going to solve my problems. The guy's going to be the light that I'm lacking in my life. The responsibility of filling up that happiness void renders on him. He feels it. He feels this anxiety. He feels this neediness. He feels this way of you showing up that is not just about him. It's about wanting someone. No guy feels special with that. And he might be kind to you in some ways. He's going to give you some distance and he's not going to commit to you if you're showing up this way. Before I share the last two labels or boxes, one of them leading to commitment, the other one not. If you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet you're not fully aware of the root cause, not the symptoms, why you're still single. So what I've done is I've taken 13 years of working every single day, connecting with women, helping them from every walk of life, every kind of love challenge you can imagine to land their ideal relationship and guide. And I've gotten some of those learnings and put together a quiz you can take in about 60 seconds that will reveal to you the number one reason you're still single. If you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description of this video. You will see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions. And within 60 seconds, you'll have two things. The answer to the question, why you're still single, and a report based on your specific blind spot that's going to share with you the number one thing you can do if you want to attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. The fourth category, men who are seeking deep, lifelong commitment put women into is the hot summer night. The hot summer night is that high chemistry, sparky, great connection that goes into the depth of physicality and sex much earlier. Now, I'm not saying that you can't connect with a guy early on, have sex with him on the first night and be married for 50 years. That happens the minority of the time. So if you're going to share a comment with me saying that that happened to you, you're not the majority of women. The majority of women connect with guys and too easily give themselves to the man. The man doesn't value them highly enough. He values them for fun. He values them for a fling. He values them for a fun night or a fun summer but not for the woman he wants to introduce with his mom. Is it a double standard that's shitty? Yes. Should it be different? Yes, but that's how it is. So you'd rather act in the world the way things are if you want to be able to create what you want. Here's also why it works to your advantage because when you work this way, when you wait a little longer, when you have him show up emotionally first before physically, he understands there's more value in you. He has to work harder to get your connection. And he values it more. The fifth category, the only one that gets him to commit, inspires him to do so, is inspired high value. Inspired high value is going to have a combination of two things. High magnet, meaning high expression of you, uniqueness, radiance, beauty that comes from within, not just beauty that's cosmetically arranged, and high boundaries. You need both. If you don't have a high magnet, then... The guy is not going to want to go through, jump through hoops through your boundaries. He's not going to care enough. If you have high magnet, but not high enough boundaries, guys will use you and leave you. If you have both high magnet, high expression, high meaning in your life, connecting to your worth and value and boundaries where you can say, thank you for the invite to your house on the first date. I don't do that kind of thing with guys I'm not familiar with. So if you'd like to go to a restaurant, I'm all for that. You're not saying you're doing it wrong. You're saying, here's what I can do instead. If you want to go hiking to this group thing that we're doing, cool. Going to this trip the first night where we've connected, it's not a thing I'm feeling comfortable with. So that's the thing that needs to happen. He needs to feel your high value, your radiance, your light, your expression, your beauty, your emotional connection, and understand that he has a path that he has to work through to be able to win your heart. You might be in one of the other boxes. And if you are, there's a way out. Sometimes it's not going to be for that guy. Sometimes it will. So here's the thing I'm proposing to you. You want to get through these steps, not because you want the guy to like you, because you want to show up in the most high value version you can show up. That doesn't mean imitating anyone else. That doesn't mean trying to be someone you're not. It means being the best version of you. The first thing you need to do, the first step is to be unapologetic in your uniqueness. If you've been half-assing it, if you've been lowering your light, if you've been dumbing it down, if you've been trying to appease everyone, if you've been trying to be too agreeable, this is not about being combative. It's about being you. It's about sharing who you are, what makes you unique, your quirks, your differences, your awesomeness, your flaws, the whole thing, putting it out there with more courage. Here's what this will do. If a guy is looking for someone seriously, 
he's going to find more authenticity in you and feel either more connected or definitely know you're not for him, but not be in the middle of the whole thing. Second step is radiance always wins. If in connecting with guys, and it's okay if it's happened, you've dimmed your light, you felt unseen and you felt maybe betrayed, you've become a little cynical, you've become a little bit less bright into your awesomeness, it's time to stop dating for a little bit, regroup, do the things that make you feel connected, alive and meaningful, and then put yourself out there again. Number three, create sources of abundance. If you are focusing on one dude who's not really showing up for you, who's hit and missing you, who's friend zoning you, find more dudes to connect with. Show yourself and him that you're not gonna hold your breath for this guy to kind of show up. He's not your boyfriend. Show up, create connections with other people, know that other people can appreciate you and know you. And when you show up with more abundance, where you can walk away from a negotiation, you have more power. When you can only say yes to that person, you're kind of stuck. Last step is set boundaries, even if it's scary. Setting boundaries, if you haven't been doing it, is not gonna feel comfortable, it's not gonna feel fun, and it might feel scary. But guess what happens when you set boundaries? Guys understand that you have value. Guys understand that you're not just a pushover. Guys understand that if they want to connect with you, they have to be in the res version as well. Which means not only does he become a better man, as a result of being with you, but he values you more. Hope this is helpful and useful and insightful. If it is, it would mean the world to me because this is how you can grow and reach more women. If you click like and subscribe, if you want to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation games or stupid techniques that never work, make sure to watch the next video right here.